I remember these guys. Hello and welcome to Let's Play PsyOps the Mindgate Conspiracy. I am Fiendly. I'm Zane. I'm Scruffo. This is the 2004 shooter that involves using your mind to kill people. No, not that one. This one, the one called PsyOps. The one that emulates Second Sight. That one. <laughs> this one came out before Second Sight. What? No way. Get out of here. That there was our uh, loading screen that you might have noticed. It's probably the last time you're going to see it, so I hope you enjoyed it. I don't even remember what it looked like. Oh god, it's already affecting my mind. Forget all about it, yeah. This game is uh, laden with cutscenes that are heavy in dialogue and low in subtitles, so get ready for a cinematic experience. Here's your man, Nick Scryer. Facial reconstruction and a memory one. Intelligence has the movement attacking the refinery in about 90 hours from now. We're ready when he is. This memory wipe will give us plenty of time to drop him in and get him past the movement psi probes. Mindgate's specialty is psyops. I've done some homework on Mindgate. Your boy's got quite a reputation and it's not all good. Okay, he's no Boy Scout, but Nick Scryer is Mindgate's best. They dismissed General Krieger, but Scryer stayed with Mindgate and took his psychic powers to a new level. I feel like naming anything X Gate is already intrinsically bad. Oh, cluster headaches. I know how those feel. Oh, this is badass. I hope we get to play this one day. Unlikely. Where'd that ship come from? I appreciate how silent it was until he saw it. Move it! Move it! Move it! Come on! Go! I can't believe this game has hacked my mind into thinking I'm tired. You're thinking of mind hack. My jack. Oh no. I have that game. Sorry. Oh, is this Geist? Why are we playing Geist? God. Turns out every game is about controlling people's minds. Now. Oh, he's an RTS commander, of course. He really needs to micro those units way better.
attempt to escape. Defiance will not be tolerated. This is the movement. The huh, movement are we the bad guys? That or a Pepsi commercial. Thinking was more Apple. Yeah, this is definitely an Apple show. Is our main character gonna telekinesis a hammer through that screen? This is the movement. All these medals I gave to myself, I don't even know what they mean. Welcome to the movement, gentlemen. I am the general. You are my recruits. Your life now belongs to me. You will serve, or you will die. <laughs> well, well. Serve or die. Take this one to solitary. I don't understand. Why shoot the one that was not the troublemaker? Nick? You're finally here. Nick. Ah. Calm down. How the hell do you know my name? I can help you get out of here, but you have to trust me. Trust you? Trust this for now at least. Just get out of the cell block and meet me on the supply room on this floor. But who are... Okay, so meet up at the supply room, wherever that is. Damn, she seems familiar. But I don't know whether I should trust her or kill her. Ah, whatever. At least she gave me a gun. It's better than a kick in the nuts. Ooh, I see they give you moral choices now. Yeah, our hero is a real so witty glad. badass. I'm so glad. Yeah. I'm half tempted to just get him killed right now for what he's already said. I also like that some games let you play through non-lethally all the way through. In this game, our main character has killed somebody before we even get to control him. That's that's awesome. Uh, I appreciate it. It is that. pretty awesome. It's indicative of how ridiculously violent this game is. But we'll get to that. Now we're dealing with terrible shooter controls. Um, because this game focuses mainly on the uh, the mind abilities, the shooter aspects suffer badly. Yeah, this reticle looks really bad. Look, you have to understand, this was before the time they realized how to do third-person shooter combat on a console. The Punisher came out six months later. I love that it, it was like, you know, the bad guy, he's important, but look at that box behind him. Isn't that a fucking great box? Well, the boxes are kind of important because uh, you can only take cover against crates. All these walls we're looking at, we can't take cover on them. But that's great. Nothing but chest high boxes all around the building. Precisely. And the button to take cover is L3. If you uh, recall the old PS2 controller, that is not an easy button to hit. No, no, it only got easy on the PS3, but even still, it's not a, not a good button. It's always been awkward. Cover is not a priority in this game. As it shouldn't be. Fuck cover. Cover-based shooters suck. Yeah, cover is pretty awful. Really just slows things down. We're going to be much more aggressive than your average cover shooter protagonist. As you should be, really. Yeah, absolutely. Not only did that one button on that uh, massive console open up the laser grid, it also opened up every single door in the area. There was one more health pack a little ways back, but I didn't bother to get it. Won't be needing it. Keep together! The activated security. 
security beam. Stand by. Whoa, whoa! Keep quiet! These guys look a lot like the Hellgas. What? No, no, they don't even. They just. No, no way. That was exactly what I was thinking the first time I played this. Anyway, gun demonstration, because this is a third person shooter. Let's see how good the guns are in this game. Super great! Yeah, I mean, the pistol actually doesn't suck. It's what you'd expect from the sidearm that you can't ever drop. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at one of the main guns, though. Even better. Good hustle. It's, it's awful. This machine gun is worthless. Wow. Um, now, does, does this operate on the Counter-Strike kind of thing, where if you hold down the fire, you're going to get a wider and wider spread, and you want to crouch and shoot as much as possible? Yeah, you do get a tighter spread if you crouch, and uh, short bursts of fire are much more accurate than sustained bursts. Okay. But nonetheless... Yeah, it took a clip and a half to kill one guy. Uh, yeah, that's a bit ridiculous. So, the shooter mechanics on their own are not going to get you through this game. And we don't currently have any psychic powers. Not that we get those. Oh yeah, that's... what am I talking about? This game has no psychic powers, this is just a... generic military shooter. Yeah, you know, the, the name... PsyOps is just a, a a branch of uh, of a military thing. I, I don't know what I'm going for. It's a sequel to uh, Black Ops. Right, right. A sequel years before. Truly. And uh, as you saw, the melee strikes are also incredibly impactful in this game. Kick him in the shins. He kicks like James Sunderland. Yeah, the melee is profoundly awkward. I adore it. Ooh, you got a spaz. Or spas, however you want to pronounce it. Maybe even spas. It's it's Italian. It's generic video game shotgun, with no copyrighted name. It's a massive improvement over the machine gun. That's all I need it to be. Ooh, is it actually like a good shotgun then, or where where you can actually fire more than one foot in front of you? No. Nope. It's point blank only, but it is very effective at point blank. Uh, okay, fine. We're about to give it a little test drive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a pretty good shotgun. Huh. That guy didn't notice anything, luckily. Just the giant blood mural on the wall. What a strange wall. Are you just gonna blast everyone's head off? Till I run out of ammo. Worth it. Yeah, yeah. That's why this gun was kinda hidden. We're not supposed to get it for another like two or three levels. Are you serious? Yeah. I can, I can imagine. But I hope you like cutscenes. Oh, love cutscenes. Because we're in great. for a few more. <laughs> oh no. Sorry. What took you so long? Where'd they take my squad? The next floor, for processing. But you're not ready, Nick. You have to recover your abilities. I'm ready to go now. You need to find some patients, or you'll end up joining them. You trust me, don't you? What was that? It's for your own good, Nick. The hell it is. Who are you? Sarah Blake. I'm working inside the movement as a double agent. I can keep helping you as long as I don't get caught. What did you give me? First things first. You don't have security clearance, but if you trip the switch, all security beams will go down. Then you can make your way to the elevator to get to the second floor. Here's the key to the generator room. Get going before they discover you've escaped. So we've covered everything wrong with this game. It's finally time to get to the good part. The rich, wonderful dialogue between the characters. 
Now, when I played this, I was dumped into a tutorial immediately after that cutscene. I've moved that to the end of this video, so as to uh, improve the pacing considerably. Fair enough, fair enough. I also kind of appreciate that both their pistols have silencers on it, but I don't remember the pistol ever being silenced when you shot it. Eh, it doesn't alert enemies as much as the shotgun does. You know what else doesn't alert enemies? Shooting somebody's head clean off. I mean, like, they, they can't... They can't say anything if they don't have a fucking mouth. Yep. The uh, tutorials in this game do have good character building moments between uh, Nick and a character we haven't met yet. Or I guess we did sort of meet him in that opening cutscene. Who could you be talking about? Indeed. We'll find out at the end of the video. The, the uh, tutorials are pretty cool. They're much better than your average video game tutorials, but they really do ruin the pacing of this level. So I put them at the end as sort of bonus content. It's for the best. Don't be too daunted by the runtime of this video. I think character building is important, though. Very true. I do hope people will watch the tutorials. They do involve a lot of murder, so... Nice. If you like what you're seeing right now, <laughs> you might want to watch the tutorials. Oh, man, this is... This is already, like... It, it, it's... It's resonating in such a perfect way. Yeah, I never even played this game, but I remember this room vividly from watching a friend play it for like five minutes. So there was a worker in between the two switches. He's gone. I don't know where the hell he went after that explosion. I, I think you exploded him. Yeah, but explosions leave a corpse. His explosion did not. You exploded him multiple times. Exploded him into oblivion. One to dispose of the life, the other to dispose of the body. <laughs> Good ladder use. That guy is a survivor. I kind of appreciate that the TK isn't a one-hit kill, but also at the same time I want it to be a one-hit kill. Yeah, you can make it a one-hit kill by doing it properly. The first guy I threw, he died instantly because I threw him into the generators from the top level. The second guy, I had to throw him all over the damn place. So that that makes it that makes it pretty good though. Good job, Nick. What the hell is this? Where are you? I'm speaking to you inside your mind through telepathy. Telepathy? Those movement agents that work for the general have some sort of psi powers. Now you? Nick, hurry. Get a key card in the guard room to use the elevator. Not the first time this has happened, Nick, please. I just like how, how basically she, the way she said telepathy, you, you could imagine like her hands just like waving like telepathy. <laughs> and it blew Nick's feeble mind. <laughs> oh, I did find the uh, worker's corpse, by the way. It was uh, in the water there, playing light as a feather, stiff as a board. But yeah, our hero is a fool. This is a generic military man. Yeah, pretty much. Which is very... it's weird having him be a psychic and also be real dumb. Yeah, that doesn't really... fit what you would assume a psychic would be. Yeah, he's not like some sort of researcher or scientist or something. Yeah, like being a psychic <laughs> gives you a lot of potential to be an interesting character. You know, you, you talk bad about the melee, and then you show us <laughs> that, and I don't know. Like I said, I love the melee. I love how bad and awkward it is. Kicking someone, like, halfway across the room is pretty awesome. Yeah, when they ragdoll, they are weightless, so... Get them on the floor and toss them around. So just having telekinesis really opens this game up big time, and there are six psychic powers. Shane, there isn't more, but it's kind of hard to put more. Yeah, six is plenty, really. In fact, telekinesis is ridiculously overuseful. It, it should be. It should be. It's the first one you got. Yeah. But it, it might be the best one in the entire game. Oh, and uh, the, there was another tutorial there. We'll be seeing that at the end as well. Oh, look, it's sight jacking, but... 
without a victim. Without a victim. Did you have to do that for the thing to open? Absolutely not. Just because we got the new power, I decided to use it to show it off, but... You gave him a real James T. Kirk there. <laughs> yep. One hit kills in, uh... In melee. If you're stealthy, you can uh, knock people out instantly. That's cool. Why be stealthy? Stealth is unbelievably awkward in this game. Very glitchy. It's another afterthought. Needless to say, we won't be doing a lot of stealth. That right there is a bottomless pit. <laughs> He's fine. It's not good design, I don't think. He knew the occupational hazards. You know, I don't think I don't think villains really care about OSHA laws. True. So time to finally use some of that crap we've been collecting. There's a uh, health and psi recovery items, 50% and 25% for each type. There's also a 100% psi recovery item. That we can only carry one of. But not 100% of uh, health? Nope. That's weird. Yeah, it is odd. Especially because we're going to get a psi recovery ability later in the game, but not a health recovery ability. So health is technically a finite resource. That becomes a bit of a problem if we were playing this game on Elite. Because the enemies do about three times as much damage. I didn't feel like doing that to myself. No, no, uh... I, I could imagine. Now before we move on, we're gonna do something awkward and climb on this fence. But why? It triggers a gun that should not be triggered because there's a door between us and it. <laughs> what? Regardless, gnome. <laughs> That's the big collectible for PsyOps. Well, it's a second. I don't know why. It's a second mention of a gnome. The first one was the oil tanker. Yeah, I was hoping people would notice that. I didn't pay attention. For some reason, there's a there's a real gnome theme. But why? So I'm half convinced that at least somebody, probably the person that, that implemented the gnomes, moved on to work at Valve? You don't belong here. It's my first day. We're all gonna die. Hmm. That's a thought. An unlikely thought, but a thought nonetheless. What are you doing? You're so close. You are so close to shoving that nerd in a locker. <laughs> I see what you were trying to do. <laughs> we had to kill him in order to get his uh, hypo spray as well as his uh, key card. The hypo spray is that Galarian syringe that he was carrying around. Ooh. You pick it up and it immediately restores some of your uh, health and psi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Telekinesis is great, and it always will be. Oh my god, I just, I just love that. Oh, I'm gonna run over to get- Oh shit! <laughs> just went face first in, into an explosive barrel. Yep. The blue guy also had some good dialogue while we were beating the shit out of him. The civilians in this game have the best dialogue. The soldiers, they don't really say much of anything interesting. But civilians are fun to play. That's, that's the kind of sadism this game brings out of me. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, nothing wrong with that. This game is incredibly violent. It's truly appalling, the lack of respect that uh, the psychics have for human life. That's the theme of this game, and the, it's not a theme that actually gets explored, it's just something I noticed from playing it. That's a shame. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, there's a great many ways to deal with the uh, auto gun here. I like to just distract it and walk past. Nice. That's, that's clever too. Yep. And that brings an end to the first level. Next time things will skyrocket drastically in this nightmare silo we have to deal with. But we don't have to deal with it yet. Uh, is, is the main thing going to be a nuke? Feels like this is very nuke silo right now. Something like that. Look at all that property damage. Yeah. 
try to ignore the fact that there's 15 minutes of gameplay in this 40 minute video. Hmm. Oh, collecting the gnome got us a extra mission called Tip the Idol. Ooh. So that's what the gnomes do. They're basically bonus missions and stuff. It's neat. But on to the tutorial. All right, Nick. Let's start your telekinesis training. To keep it simple, I'm going to start referring to telekinesis as TK from now on. Also, we've juiced you up with unlimited psi powers during this test. But remember, in the real world, all psi powers drain with use. We'll skip the spoon bending and start by controlling objects using telekinesis. Oh, he does actually look younger. Notably so, yes. Select a target to TK by moving the aim reticle over the object. Always refer to the HUD for control instructions. Keep an eye on Barrett throughout these uh, tutorials as well, because he changes drastically. Oh, he he looks fantastic. A lot of the model resources went behind the so tutorials. The pressure applied determines the height of lifted objects. Stay and practice a while, then exit through the doorway to continue your training. Barrett looks to be maybe the same right, size Nick. model Next, as Kingpin. I don't know if anyone else caught it's that, but maybe. Climb over. Yeah, it was so my first thought when I first saw him. Okay, good. <laughs> You're not insane. Well, not in this respect. I was about to say. Next, I'll need you to come over to my house and use TK to clean every inch of it. Yeah, Barrett's got a neat character. It's fun to get to know him before we have to fight him as an enemy, as we are inevitably going to do. How dare. We're good friends with him. Yeah, it really does humanize and make him likable before we uh, have to hate him. I, I appreciate that. Any game that can do that is a good game. Or adequate enough. Yeah, it's probably the best writing in this entire game, is making Barrett likable. The villain. <laughs> so I'm not playing with blocks properly yet. Now you're thinking with cubes. <laughs> ah, so that's exactly close. the same formation I had the first time, so just start from scratch. I swear to God. Good. Good. I'm glad. Perfect staircase. And we're out of here. It only took one minute. Nice climbing, Nick. Was it? I want you to use telekinesis to move a crate through each hole in the wall. Lift the crate to the desired height and move it forward. Don't throw the crate. It'll break easily. First, get a crate through the hole on the lower left. Here's where we use the pressure-sensitive buttons to, uh, you know, perfectly height our moving. Which is not really a uh, thing in the game. No, no, but they kind of want you to get the, the idea. The yeah, they're like bragging about how cool it is. And it is pretty cool. Also, I, I was kind of now half expecting you to hole. just crop in some okay. hole in the wall. The last hole is too high for a normal TK lift. You will need to use sure. a technique called TK multi-lift. Refer to the HUD to walk you through the technique. And here's another thing that never really comes up in the game, but it's kind of neat. If we've got something floating, then we telekinesis it again. That's cool. It goes even higher. That is very nifty. Good job, Nick. The next section is through the door behind you. All sorts of options. This game can really be a playground if you want to dick around a lot. Now to the good stuff. Let's use telekinesis to throw objects at live targets. And don't worry, these guys get well paid. First. Use TK to throw a crate at the stationary test subject. Gotta love that explanation. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry. They have great workman's comp. If they die, they they, they have a, like a billion dollar insurance policy. Their family will be taken care of. I swear <laughs> OSHA's gonna have a field day with this. Good. That'll that was a metal crate. Now try and hit a moving target. <laughs> yeah, we don't pass until he's dead. That's good fun, isn't it? Finally, <laughs> Fucking try to Christ. hit a target moving on That's a lot of blood. Side. Yeah. Oh, he killed two guys. But they... Didn't, that's part of their job description. It's a fringe benefit of their job. This guy's doing great work. Yep. It's got me outsmarted. 
There you go. Now that one didn't even look like it hit. Might I suggest a gun? Enemies. Pick up that guy and throw him against the wall a few times. His weapon will drop after he dies. <laughs> not that not that he'll die, of course. It just says just simulated death. It's fine, don't worry. <laughs> it's all a simulation, Nick. Now TK the next target, and while he's in the air, use your weapon to shoot him. With your gun. This is how they breed that uh, lack of human life value. It is kind of awkward to aim someone. Don't stop shooting him in the dick. No, you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, please. I am. There's another gun right in front of you, Nick. Target it, and TK throw it to yourself to collect the ammo. Nick, we didn't think you'd take to killing stuff so fast. Honestly, that's it's very strange. Right. Let's see how you handle a live combat situation. Soldiers will charge into the room and attack you from all sides. Try and use cover while eliminating the threats. Use the explosive barrels to your advantage. You can also use the assault rifle, but don't rely on your gun. Kill the designated number of enemies using TK in some way. You have limited health and ammo, so be careful. This part, contrary to the previous ones, is actually kind of dangerous. I've managed to die here in the tutorial, which is embarrassing. But for now, I'm I'm strategically planning. I had to get the cursor just right to pick up that barrel. I, I can't help but feel like maybe this game would be better on the PC, but with contact sensitive controls, it might not. Yeah, I mean, the uh, pressure sensitive buttons don't really do anything, so probably afford to lose them and in fact this game was on PC they released it uh, for free but with in-game ads oh weird. and you could pay to get rid of the ads that's strange. you know I, I remember that being a thing but nobody ever actually did anything with that like and, and what I mean by that is there were still ads in games but the games were still fucking expensive as shit so I appreciate that they did that. Nice work, Scribe. Maybe yeah, good job. you'll be as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you did everything right. So Nick's just gonna die in this flashback. Yep. And we're gonna move on to the next uh, tutorial. Which is three years later. Now it's time to learn remote viewing, or RV for short. Remote viewing is an out-of-body stealth skill that allows you to see through doors and around obstructions. When using RV, you won't be able to attack. Press the remote viewing button, then move around like you normally would. Press it again to exit RV. Remember, Nick, you can go right through doors. Oh my god, Nick, you look horrible. Now, that use RV shave. to help find Just the shave. terminal that unlocks Please. the door. This power is unfortunately not nearly as violent, but the tutorial is a little shorter. That's always positive. This part, though, is pretty tedious. You'd think, like, remote viewing would probably be the easier of the psychic powers and wouldn't take a, like, three-year gap in training? Yeah, no kidding. Probably should have started with that one chronologically. Now move ahead and exit the door by the terminal to get to the next test. Sure is good on the eyes, though. Yeah, you may notice that the game overall is pretty damn dark. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's because the remote viewing ability just cranks up the gamma. Next, use remote viewing to observe the path of a guard. Find cover and keep your body hidden while you're in RV. And like I've said, stealth is not really a thing in this game. It's not viable for the most part. So this ability has no practical function. It's there because you just... They just wanted something there. Yeah, more or less. I mean, it does have its uses. It's particularly popping through uh, doors to know what's on the other side. But more often than not, I just like to kick the door down and blow up whatever's inside. Yeah, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Yeah. It's not going to slow the game down like it did uh, Second Sight. Because Second Sight was more about stealth than this game is. 
Give this guy a medal. Nice work. You just broke his spine. Give him a medal. You'll be good in time for Starfleet as soon as possible. This, one's easy this rate, you'll I'll be commanding your own ship. Wonderful. Movement. Then sneak past the enemy without being detected. I hate this power. Please tell me you will never use this power ever again. That's a promise. No, I'm gonna have to use it occasionally. <laughs> You dumbass, Nick. Not even allowed to kill him. That's you dumbass. This one's easy, Nick. <laughs> Where'd your bloodthirst go, Barrett? Since when have we had standards for human life? Yeah, for three years he's been teaching me to do nothing but kill people. And I kill a guy and he gets mad at me. Pretty sure opening the door will alert him too. So yeah, you would think. That's another reason stealth is so awkward, because you do You're loud things around people, and it doesn't have any effect. Stuff. Now let's move on. Hey, this is a good one, but be careful, Nick. If they discover you're there, you fail the test. Take out both guys undetected to get to the final test. Another shitty thing about uh, remote viewing is that you can only use it to look around. In Second Sight, they had astral projection, so you could both go look around, see what's ahead of you, and press buttons and stuff. It was immeasurably more useful. Sounds like it would be. Yeah. Good game, Your too. stealth skills are improved. Quite. But are you ready for combat? I recommend people watch the Second Sight LP that my name is Kaz did. Listen up, Nick. Your name's Use Feeny. remote viewing to navigate this maze. You need don't, to reach the terminal and much. press the button to unlock Fair the enough. exit door. The timer starts when you walk into the maze. Terminate anything that gets in your way. So this is the final part, and uh, it's slightly closer to fun. I just feel like everything is is punishing you for your bloodlust and the whole thing about this game was the bloodlust yeah this specific tutorial is very the antithesis to the game at large it's weird and it really really breaks up the pacing of the level badly so this this uh, specific tutorial is what gave me the idea to move into the end makes perfect sense they probably had some plans for better stuff, but then gave that up when they realized guns. Even the controller real estate they had to deal with caused them to uh, get rid of a lot of uh, features that many third-person shooters have. Because every power has its own button. You don't cycle through them. Yeah, that really messes with that real estate. In retrospect, maybe, maybe they could have done that a bit. You did an excellent job, Nick. Now let's go get some lunch. I'm starving. It does work pretty well once you get used to it. But there we go, we made it through. The low point of the entire game. And the music stops very abruptly. <laughs> wow, okay. I don't know why that happens, but there we go. See you next time for more PsyOps. See you, everybody. Bye.